Almost 30% of all the water in our water distribution systems around the globe are lost to leaks before they even reach the taps. Victoria, how is Phytotech tackling this incredible challenge? Actually, 95% of leaks never appear above ground. And humans are really poor at hunting for leaks because they can't hear. This is a huge challenge for the world globally. And it's important that we became sensor agnostic, non-proprietary. So we treat each leak as an asset and listen to its multiple characteristics. So we'll take any audio file from any manufacturer, including our own little bugs, and tell you if it's a leak, but most importantly, the size of the leak, because you need to get to the largest leaks first. But water authorities are capital constrained and they're not the most technologically uh, enhanced uh, organizations. So how do you make your way into helping them? We started in the UK, which has a very mature um, utility network, and they have been actually governed by Ofwat to reduce their leakage by 15% over the next five years. Oh, so there's been some pressure. So there's a real pressure, there's a regulatory financial pressure to do that. Now, in order to do that, they then understand the need, not only financial, but environmental, reputational, you know, customer experience. They need to fix that problem. Internationally, it's actually very different because they don't have that regulatory driver yet, but they are running out of water. We are facing day zero. It happened in Cape Town in 2018. What needs to happen from a government and regulatory standpoint to really help get tech like FIDO into our water distribution systems? Quite simply, FIDO wouldn't be here without United Utilities Innovation Lab in the UK. They found us and arm wrestled me to join. And we turned up with a little concept, three little balls in a garbled box and walked out of there 12 weeks later with FIDO AI being sensor agnostic, detecting leak, no leak, leak sizing. They are one of the most mature networks in the world. And they gave us openness to their network so we could train our AI. And that is the key to being successful because everybody puts AI on the end of everything. Right? And like IoT and whatever is going to be next, and ESGs replace CSR. An AI is actually a very precise tool. An AI only works by the quality of the data you feed the training library. And it's very easy in water. We made that conscious decision that we would only put in verified data. And there's only one absolute truth in leakage, is that you've dug a hole and you found a leak, or you've dug a hole and you haven't found a leak. And so we manually verified, we've got over 2.4 million verified files to feed FIDO, to train it, so it keeps learning all the time. And that's why we've been, thanks to United Utilities, we've got to where we have so fast. So how does the technology actually work to detect leaks? What is the process and workflow? What it does is it just takes a simple raw audio data file. That's all it needs. And it's a little bit like a meal-free pastry. It decides the best outcome at each of the multiple decision points it makes to actually identify the leak and the size of leak and the type of pipe material it's on. And with our little FIDO bugs, it'll give you the exact location as well. So it has but learned- those aren't needed, right? It's, it's You don't need those, you can, if, but if you haven't got sensors, and this is what really quite annoyed me when you looked at this global problem, that the industry was servicing it by being proprietary and expensive hardware. And I said, that's not happening. So we haven't made many friends, <laughs> but we've said, actually, we're gonna give the hardware away for free or we'll analyze your hardware's output. We don't care, we've got this global challenge. And it just takes the raw data and it's learned the characteristics of every individual leak. So if you think it's a global collaboration. The, the, you mean the audio characteristics? The audio, so it's but it's also, we've said it, yes, it's frequencies, it's characteristics, how it propagates in different types of pipe and in different environmental factors. And then we look at the age of the pipes it's looked at. So it learns all that. But here's a really clever thing. It's a global collaboration. And everybody bandies collaboration around almost as frequently as AI and IoT. And what it does, every time FIDO analyzes a file anywhere in the world, that leak becomes its own personality. It has its own ID number, FIDO ID number, and we track it through the whole leak cycle program. So you may have one in Lisbon, a little FIDO bug. You may have an acoustic logger in Rio de Janeiro or a hydrophone in wet and windy Wigan. And as soon as we analyze that audio file, it's got that number and we feed it back into FIDO. So globally, FIDO AI is getting more accurate, more intelligent. So Victoria, with all the inputs you have today and the data sets you've built, how accurate is FIDO at detecting leaks today? 92% is the official answer. 
um, actually we're at 97% accuracy. And we're talking about accuracy of leak and no leak and leak sizing. And when you talk about accuracy, so well, how do you prove it? So there's false positives and false negatives. So we are 97% right on our, on our false negatives and 93% on our false false positives. So that's a really high accuracy of detecting leaks that have already happened, but what about predicting where leaks are going to happen? You can only do it through true data, true accurate data. So remember that global collaboration of the FIDO ID number? So we know how a leak behaves. We turn it into an asset. We don't cherish it, but it sits there for an eternity. It's not a transient event. When it's fixed, you forget about it. FIDO remembers it, and it remembers where it occurred, when it occurred, the time of year, the pipe type, the location, and it learns and builds, and you see patterns. And patterns are really powerful when it comes to looking for predictive analysis. So I can probably tell you now on the United Utilities Network where you're going to have problem areas um, come next spring, come the thaw. And we can do that for any water utility network, the more files we analyze, the more data we have. Why did you enter the KPMG Private Enterprise Global Tech Innovator Competition? I'm highly competitive. And I think the water industry has this terrible reputation for being slow and fusty and old and not taking new technology. I thought I'm going to change it, shake it up a bit. So I wanted to go up against healthcare, life sciences, automation space. And this seems a platform to do it. And I wanted to take people to understand the need for this planet where four out of 10 people face water insecurity. You have to be agnostic. You need a big technology that's open data that can solve the challenge. And I wanted the world, not just outside the water industry, to understand what we should be doing.